लास्ट टाइम वी डिस्कस्ड वेरियस फेजेज ऑफ एंडोमीट्रियम एंड नो आई वी जस्ट शिफ्ट ओवर टू द इन्फ्लमेश ऑफ द एंडोमीट्रियम इन दैट द फर्स्ट इज अक्यूट एंडोमीट्राइटिस अक्यूट एंडोमीट्राइटिस इज अनकॉमन एंड लिमिटेड टू बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन विच वी सी आफ्टर डिलीवरी और मिस कैरेज रिटेन प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ कंसेप्शन दे ऑल्सो आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू बी द प्रिडिस्पोजिंग कॉज द कॉजिटिव ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर ग्रुप ए हिमोलिटिक स्टेप्टोकॉकाई and staphylococcus the inflammatory response is mainly limited to the interstitium and is entirely non specific now the chronic endometritis is the inflammation of the endometrium which occurs in the various conditions number 1 patient suffering from chronic pelvic inflammatory diseases to so postpartum or post abortion patients with retained progress of conception women with intrauterine contraceptive devices so three causes i repeat once again number 1 patient suffering from chronic pelvic inflammatory diseases to post partum and post abortion patients having retained progress of conception and female with a history of intrauterine contraceptive devices tuberculosis either milary spread or more commonly from drainage of tuberculous salpingitis that is also a cause in about 15% of cases there is no obvious cause but plasma cells are present along with macrophages and lymphocytes in the stroma non specific chronic endometritis leads to abnormal bleeding pain discharge and infertility chlamydia is also involved in endometritis it can be associated with acute and chronic endometritis when there is acute endometritis there are polymorphonuclear leukocytes but when there is chronic endometritis one can find inflammatory cellular infiltrate consisting of plasma cells antibiotic therapy is indicated in for the cure of endometritis next we go to endometriosis and adenomyosis endometriosis is the presence of endometrial tissue outside the uterus whereas adenomyosis is presence of endometrial tissue deeper into the myometrial muscles most commonly both endometrial glands and endometrial stroma are present in endometriosis but really only it consists of endometrial stroma in case of endometriosis following sites they are most commonly involved ovaries uterine ligament recto vaginal septum pelvic peritoneum large and small bowel and appendix mucosa of the cervix vagina and fallopian tubes can also be involved endometriosis is also seen in laparotomy scars it is responsible for infertility dysmenorrhea that is painful menstruation pelvic pain and this is commonly seen in the third and fourth decade of life endometriosis also show the features of invasion to the surrounding organs and if the muscular wall of the intestine is infiltrated or invaded by the endometrial tissue uh, intestinal complications like intestinal obstruction or there is or intestinal symptoms can be seen now you can well see in the photograph micro photograph that intestinal tissue is present in the wall of the intestine and that leads to inflammation ultimately the inflammation goes to the serosal surface of the intestine and leads to invasion how the in- endometriosis takes place the two major theories for the development of endometrium or uh, for the development of the endometriosis number 1 the metastatic theory and according to this theory endometrial tissue is implanted at an abnormal site and it is seen that or it is postulated that retrograde menstruation 
through the fallopian tubes occur regularly even in normal women and could mediate the spread of endometrial tissue to the peritoneal cavity so that is that if uh, in the normal even in the normal female one can find or one can see uh, the menstruation is retrograde and the through that fallopian tubes the endometrial tissue can spread to the peritoneal cavity endometriosis is also found in the cervical mucosa particularly following surgical procedures and that is even the laparotomy scars after cesarean section that supports the implantation theory endometrial tissue or endometriosis can be seen at distant sites and here the spread is through the blood or lymphatic and we use the word metastasis the other theory is metaplastic theory endometrium could directly arise cellomic epithelium from that is the mesothelium of the pelvis or abdomen from which the mullerian duct and ultimately endometrium itself originate during embryonic development so this means that there is metaplastic theory that the conversion of the cellomic epithelium which is found in the embryonic development there are many other factors which support the spread of the uh, endometriosis or which support the uh, development of endometriosis number 1 there are genetic factors hormonal factors immune factors and there is profound activation of the inflammatory cascade of many of many chemical mediators like interleukin 1 beta tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 6 beneficial effects of cox2 inhibitors on pelvic pain an important clinical feature of this disorder it is seen that there is estrogen production by the endometriotic stromal cells which is markedly increased or we can say which is markedly upregulated due to in part to high levels of the key steroidogenic enzyme and that is aromatase that is highly responsible for the upregulation this normal this enzyme is absent in the normal endometrial stroma estrogen enhances the persistence of endometrial tissue with the result that inhibitors of aromatase are ben- beneficial in the treatment of the endometriosis endometriotic tissue is resistant to the anti estrogenic effect of progesterone which suggests that progesterone resistance also play a role in endometriosis for say of endometriosis they respond to both intrinsic and extrinsic hormonal stimulation leading to the periodic bleeding now once the bleeding takes place this produces small nodules which are red blue to yellow brown in color and they are just beneath the mucosal or serosal surfaces when the hemorrhage is organized or when the hemorrhage becomes old there is extensive fibrosis and with the result adhesions developed between tubes ovaries and other structures obliterating the pouch of douglas the ovaries are the most common site of endometriosis and they become markedly distorted cyst like structures are present which are 3 to 5 cm in diameter and filled with brownish material which are previous hemorrhages and they are called as chocolate cyst or endometriomas aggressive form of endometriosis can infiltrate tissue and cause fibrosis and ultimately there is adhesion formation if you see under microscope the histology of these endometrial cyst they are composed of both endometrial glands and stroma with or without presence of 
hemocytin. In very rare cases, only stoma is identified. Clinical features, it depends upon the site which is involved. They can be dysmenorrhea, pain during intercourse, pelvic pain due to intrapelvic bleeding and periuterine adhesions. If rectum is involved, pain occurs during defecation. Dysuria occurs when there is involvement of the urinary bladder. Intestinal disturbance appears when small intestine is affected. Menstrual irregularities are common and infertility is seen in 30 to 40 percent of females. Malignancies can develop in this setting, suggesting that endometriosis contains at-risk epithelium. Now I told you that adenomyosis is the presence of endometrial tissue within the uterine wall and if the endometrial tissue is contained in the leiomyoma, we call it as adenomyoma. When endometrial tissue is present within the wall of the uterus, there will be irregular and heavy menses, colicky pain during menses, inter pain during intercourse and pelvic pain particularly during the premenstrual period. Now you can well appreciate this uh, photograph which shows adenomyosis.